What's up everybody? It's your boy Will Carter and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, welcome to my channel. Before we go any further, make sure if you guys are not subscribed already, subscribe to my channel and join the other like 1100 people who are subscribed. And hit that bell notification icon so you can learn each and every time I can upload because you don't want to miss out when I'm uploading. And if you guys want to check me out off of YouTube, you guys can follow me on my Instagram at I'm Will Carter. For all things on Will Carter. I mean, duh. I know. I've been gone a minute. Yeah. Which is weird because it's like you would think that after hitting like a thousand subscribers, you'd be like, yeah, bitch, I'm on it. Fuck out of here. But like, oh, honestly, I gotta be real with y'all. All of this is a lot of work. Who is that? All of this is a lot of work because working a full time nine to five job, trying to grow my candle making business, trying to be consistent. Notice I said trying to be consistent on YouTube and all of my other projects on the side and I'm feeling like every single night or every single morning I'm waking up I'm like I'm just not getting enough sleep at first it was fine because I was like I'm gonna just thug it out because it's gonna be worth it all in the end and I still feel that way but I feel like it's caught up to me a little bit and now my body is just like you need to re fucking charge like you need to recharge you know and it's here's the funny thing at first, I was kind of feeling like this just wasn't enough time to do everything. But now I'm starting to think after really thinking about it that maybe it's not that I just don't have enough time, but maybe I'm just not managing my time correctly. Like it, it, it could be that too. So that's what I'm really like evaluating right now is like how I'm managing my time, working around my nine to five schedule and getting everything done because maybe I should just have like designated days that I'm working on a specific thing. You know, and I, that will fluctuate depending on the week or like depending on where it is in development, like what like, should be the priority for how many days of the week, I guess. First of all, who the fuck thought it was a good idea to make soda cans this fucking little bitch? What the fuck? So for today's video, we're going to be making a batch set of candles because I'm a candle maker, that's what I do. Wait, when was the last time I made a batch set of candles on YouTube? I think it was the video before I released the winter 2022 collection. If that is the case, and if that really is the last time I made a batch set of candles, then this is like apparently like a pattern. Like we make a bunch of candles and then we launch right after. So yes, hint, hint. We're gonna be making some coffee scented candles or coffee themed. So let's not waste no more time. Okay, so if you don't know, you know now, um, but I am using a custom triple wax blend. You guys should know this if you're subscribed to my channel, per. If you're not, the three waxes that I'm using is the um, IGI 4630. Is that right? It should be 4630. If it's not, you know what I'm talking about. Just go cool. watch my last video. I'm also using um, Coconut um, 83 from AccuBlend and also Soy 10 from AccuBlend. Um, it used to be my Cocoa Soy 93 blend, but because I added the paraffin wax into it, um, I don't actually have a name yet, but we're working on a name for her. Um, but I'm gonna be mixing these all together to make my wax blend. My wax blend consists of 60% of the Soy 10, 30% um, of the coconut wax, and the remaining 10% is the paraffin wax. I really liked how my wax blend was without the paraffin. A paraffin, I think, just helps with the hot throw a little bit more. And, um, but I don't want to change my wax blend so, so much. And that's the reason why I only um, added 10% of the paraffin. Because it really did work well without it. But I do think the extra 10% of paraffin gives it an extra kick. So we're doing that. Again, as I always say, we're not going over the numbers, sister. So <laughs> you know what? Request in the comment section down below if you would prefer if I... Um, gave you guys the measurements and the numbers each time I do this. I mean, I don't know if you guys need it because I've done it before, but you guys let me know in the comment section down below. And for anyone out there using a wax that comes in slab form, look, yeah, you guys gotta start doing this like I'm doing this. I like to use a heat gun and I just kind of lightly graze over it just a little bit, just to get it a little bit softer because it makes it so much easier to cut because I'm telling you, the waxes are so hard to cut and so hard working with waxes that come that doesn't come in the um, flake form, like let's say the Golden Brands waxes do. Um, so try this out. Get the heat gun, just lightly graze over it with the heat on the highest setting, just to soften it up a little bit. I don't want it, like don't melt it, but like soften it up. It makes working with it so much easier. 
I think my favorite thing about working with like a custom blend is you really don't have any sets of rules to follow. Like normally most waxes comes with like an instruction manual or like instructions on the website. And who's to say which instruction you should follow when you're mixing different waxes with different, you know, um, temperature requirements. As you guys already know that I don't be giving a fuck regardless, I'm still gonna like use whatever temperature I wanna use. If it doesn't work for me, it's not the right wax for me. I keep saying that. But on to the fragrance oil. Like I said earlier, we're going to be doing a coffee themed fragrance. So we're using sugar and spice from the Flaming Candle. I know it doesn't sound like a coffee fragrance, but trust me when you smell it, it definitely is a coffee themed fragrance. And it's from the Flaming Candle. You might remember this from my video where I reviewed like 30 or 15 or however many like sample fragrances I did. It was a whole shit ton. And this was probably the last one I think I did. And still love it. Also, now that I am, you know, making bigger batches each time I make candles, these pour cups that I have are just too small because when I bought them, I was making smaller batches each time. So I'm in the market for some larger pouring cups, preferably silicone, and I'll let you guys know which ones I go with because right now I have to use two separate uh, pouring cups <laughs> to measure everything I need for the entire batch because I do bigger batches than this sometimes. While I'm waiting for my wax to melt down, this is when I'm going to be wicking my vessels. Um, I'm using the Eco 12 to wick my vessels. And if you guys remember my last video, you guys may recognize the boxes. I keep all of my vessels housed in their little box um, before they're sealed, after they're sealed, at least until they're made into a candle that they sit in these little houses, their little homes. So we're gonna like take them out and we're gonna um, wick them now. My wick stickers, I've been using these wick stickers since the very start of my candle journey. I got these from Pro Candle Supply. It came with like 500. At first, I was looking at it when I first got it, like, girl, this is not 500. Who you lying to, bitch? But I really think it is 500 because I still have ran out of this roll yet. So it definitely got to be 500. So I'm going to link this one in the description box down below if you guys need some wick stickers. And I have not had any issues with these wick stickers. I haven't had any issues with them not sticking, not working. These wick stickers, it's her. It, it's her. I would say probably like nine times out of ten, as soon as I'm done wicking all of my vessels, the temperature of the wax is exactly where I want it to be. So in this particular case, I got up to um, 189 degrees, which is great for me, right in the range where I like to be. So it's good to go. Time to get this fucking um, fragrance oil in here. And of course, everybody's favorite part, we're gonna start pouring our wax into our vessels, nice, slowly, and carefully, because the last thing you wanna do is make a mess, which I tend to do all the fucking time, and it's really, really annoying. So, I've been thinking, like, of trying to get one of those funnels. I've seen people use funnels to help, like, you know, neatly pour their wax into their vessels. I don't know if I care that much, or if it's that much drama pouring this way um so for now i'm gonna just stick with the pitcher but my eye is on that little funnel horror thing machine whatever okay so i'm gonna show you guys something that i like to do that no other candle maker really does i mean not that i've seen at least i mean maybe they are candle makers that do this but i haven't seen them um but i do know that most candle makers would instruct you to cut your wicks like 24 hours after you pour your candles but i like to cut my wicks within the first 45 minutes to an hour <laughs> of pouring my candles and i know that sounds really soon um but i'll explain why so i don't like to touch my candles after they're done. So the next day, they shouldn't be bothered. Everything should be done the day that they're being poured. The only thing that should be happening afterwards is they're either being inspected or they're being sold. Not touched up, not hit with a heat gun. They shouldn't be trimmed. They should be ready to go on day one. Or they're curing, one of the other two. So that's the reason why I like to cut my wicks early. If you're cutting your wicks as early as I am, you're gonna have to hit it with the heat gun. There's no getting around that. But you're gonna hit it with a heat gun anyway, most of the time, to fix any like small imperfections that you find, such as like a little debris here or there, or maybe some small air bubbles. I get at least one or two air bubbles in every candle that I pour, so I always hit it with the heat gun. And I would rather hit it with a heat gun now when the candle is still, um, you know, kind of loose and not super solidified and easier to melt back down than to wait 24 hours later where I have to hit it with the heat gun for such a long time to melt the entire surface to get it nice and smooth because I feel like when you're doing that 
for so long, you start burning off the fragrance oil off the surface of your candles. And that, I have discovered from my testing, diminishes and weakens your cold throw, at least initially. And it also severely impacts your hot throw for at least the first hour of the first burn. And I don't wanna do that. So again, guys, I like to just make sure everything gets done now before the wax is 100% cured and solid. After cutting all the wicks and making sure we are free of any imperfections and my surfaces are nice and smooth, I like to um, cover them with the lid right away because I don't want any debris falling inside of them. I mean, like, what if your room is dusty? What if there's like a small gnat or fly in your room and she lands on your candle? Girl has several, bye. So no, we need to cover her to protect her. Again, guys, I don't want to have to touch my candles again after the first day of making them. No heat gun, no trimming, no nothing. They need to be protected. So cover them with the lid. If you don't have lids for your vessels, put like a piece of foil on top of it or something. Just make sure that you're covering them. Because imagine somebody getting a motherfucking candle that they fucking bought from you and there's a fucking fly in it. Imagine. Girl, report that bitch. And there you guys have it. My coffee scented candles. And I don't even like coffee scented candles, but her will burn her. Can't wait for you guys to experience the new collection because I've revamped everything, which is why it's taken so long to launch it from my first launch. It was never supposed to take this long, but I just kept thinking like, let's make it better, let's make it better, let's make it better, let's add this, let's add this, let's try this, let's try this, and then eventually, you know, the time slips away, but I decided that I wasn't gonna do what I did last time and punish myself for taking so long to launch. Just enjoy the creative process and launch when I feel comfortable and ready. And I'm basically there. Well, not basically, I am there. So let me stop. We're there. And now that we're here at the end of this video, you probably already know what I'm gonna say because you should have already had done it. Subscribe to my channel, hit that bell notification icon. Let me tell you something, there's 1100 other people already subscribed to my channel. So if you're not subscribed, you're the odd man out. You're the one who's lagging. So catch up, okay? You need a better internet. And then make sure you guys are following me over on my Instagram page for all things. I'm Will Carter, that's all things that on YouTube. <laughs> It's the same, just calm down, okay? <laughs> and with that all being said, have a beautiful good morning, a beautiful good afternoon, and a beautiful good night, whichever part of the world you're currently living in. Goodbye, I will see you guys on the next video.